All right, my friends, taking bets. How much will the Vanguard long-term bond fund, investment-grade bond fund, go up in the next 52 weeks? Taking bets. All right, so here's, check this out. This fund has been around uh, a long time, I can't remember. But at least since, if memory serves, at least since 1985, uh, when Portfor Portfolio Visualizer started its tracking. Anyway, so I did a, so some guy posted a comment. See, I do check the comments. Not only to make fun of crazy comments, but uh, I get a lot of informative information. Anyway, so a guy posted, he goes, Vanguard long-term bond fund is down 22% this year. I was like, damn, for is? Yeah, for is. So I checked it out. I was like, damn, dude, he's right. 22% year to date, at least at the end of July, of June. I said, that's crazy. So I went back in Histoire. I think this is, it's only had four years where it's been down. All right. And the year after it had any kind of down market, it just took off like a bat out of hell, well above t uh, double digits. I think twice is over 20%, once is like 18, once is like at 12. So we've had four years since inception where the, the fund dropped at all. And, uh, and the, the next year it came back freaking storming Norman. I was like, damn. All right. Part two, though, my friends, this is crazy. It's already down 22% year to date. Long-term investment grade bond fund. I was like, wait a second. I don't know what the yield is right now. Imagine 3.5% or something like that. And then you can say, well, yeah, Josh, the reason it did so well is because from 1985 to basically, I don't know, 2000, the interest rates kept going down, 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 down. You could even say from 1985 to 2012. Okay. So I said, all right, let's, uh, let's exclude the 80s and 90s when the bond markets... If any bond market was doing well, let's exclude those and see what it did when the, uh, you know, in the, the aughts and then going into this year. So I said, let's compare the S&P 500 to the Vanguard long-term bond market, right? And fun. And so I, at first I started in 1985. I put 10000 bucks in each. The Vanguard long-term bond market fund was, uh, was worth, I think, 180000 bucks. Well, the S&P 500 was worth 500,000 bucks. So in terms of just growth, the S&P 500 smoked it from 1985 until now. All right. But if you look for the last 23 years, from 2000 to 2000, uh, June of 2022, 22 and a half, whatever, the same rate of return. The bond market, the Vanguard long-term bond fund had the same rate of return as the S&P 500. Interesting. And yet the Vanguard long-term bond fund has less downside risk than the S&P 500. Even though the Vanguard long-term bond fund is down more than the S&P 500 so far as of the end of June. I was like, okay. Now that is interesting. So I'm thinking if preservation is your game, and we're already down the most it's ever been, you really think interest rates are going to keep going up? With an economy that's basically recession is 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 esque, you think rates are going to keep going up? Because even everyone knows that raising rates aren't going to be inflation. I'm telling you that the aura around Paul Volcker is slowly starting to fade. You can see it. You can see it. People realize, oh, raising interest rates will be inflation. Like, uh, hasn't. One thing that's beating inflation is the fact we're going to recession, and that's not because we're raising interest rates. I mean, anyone who thinks we're going to recession because high interest rates just don't know what the hell they're talking about. I mean, it's silly. The high interest rates beat inflation? We just raise, uh, <laughs> we just put us in recession? We just raised 75 basis points, what, six weeks ago, if even that? Anyway, so I'm sitting there thinking, huh. So, and then I started thinking back to how did the long-term bond fund do in the 30s? Well, we know for a fact it did quite well, all right, the Depression era time. That's not, that's, that's, that's not debatable. Did my shoe just get untied? No, okay, sweet. Oh, did it. 
Now let's get a piece of pine. There we go. All right, so we know the long-term bond fund did fine in the 80, in the 30s. How to do from 66 to 30 to 1982? I, off the top of my head, I don't know. That's what I'm working on. You can look at Wellesley. Now, Wellesley's got more than long-term bond funds, I grant you. But anyway, so it would kind of be the same premise. If you think inflation's coming in, um, out of the 70s, you're kind of looking at the same premise as you are right now, back then. Because we had long-term rates of probably 4 to 5% back then. Right now, they're probably 3 to 4 All right. And then we had high inflation, and you were locked in, essentially, if you had a, an individual bond. You locked in a high, um, a low interest rate relative to the inflation that was coming. And so then you're like, oh, man. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know about a bond fund. I've done videos on the uh, Putnam Income Fund. It's not a long term. I, I just can't remember the duration or the maturity levels of these off the top of my head. But it wasn't nearly as bad as what you think. In fact, it wasn't nearly as bad as what I thought. When I first started doing this research about three, four years ago. Huh. So it gets me thinking. We know it did well during the Depression. The bonds did. That's a fact. We know it did okay. I mean, it didn't do great during the 60s and 70s and 82. Then we know from 82 on it, bonds kicked ass and took names because the interest rates are going down. Now, everyone's going to say, well, interest rates are going up. I just don't think so. I don't think that's happening. As you can see by the uh, the ten year, dropping from basically three and a half to two point seven five right now. That's a seventy five basis point decline, my friends. A three quarters of a percent decline in like three months' time, off the three point five percent to beginning the yield. That's pretty significant. That doesn't happen in a vacuum. That happens because people believe the markets, the recession here, and they're going to start cutting rates, and the days of raising are over. The market's pretty smart in the aggregate. That's a fact. So I'm like, man, how attractive are these bonds right now? Huh. And then I was talking to this guy the other day, Teddy Ruxman, and uh, he uh, was looking at Schwab and laddering some bonds on Schwab. And uh, I can't remember what the maturity was or anything like that. I just off the top of my head, I can't remember. But you know, he's getting three and a quarter, I think, if memory serves on you know, lower maturity bonds, five to seven, maybe ten years, something like that. Which means that his yield to maturity, he'll average about we'll just say three each and every year until they mature. Those puppies mature, interest rates are up, we'll just say, because inflation kicked in. Everyone thinks inflation can be beaten by higher interest rates. What happens then? And it's just real quick about inflation being beaten by higher interest rates. Wouldn't the corollary be then low interest rates creates inflation? Of course it would. I'm going to do another video on that. Try to keep it on topic. Anyway, just look at the long term bond fund. Tell me, I mean, look at it and say, does that look promising? It does to me. Now, no way is this investment advice because I don't know your situation. It could go down another 22%. I highly suspect that won't be the case, but you never know. I don't know. Maybe Snippy Joe will, uh, you know, will get this economy running. I, I mean, has Snippy Joe ever done anything right? I mean, did you hear that when he's uh, campaigning in Alabama, he said, yeah, we were on the side of the South in Delaware because Delaware was the last state to free the slaves. Isn't that crazy? So Snippy Joe is, you know, he goes along for the ride. Whichever side is winning, he puts his finger in the air. So he doesn't know if, I mean, he's just, look, he's just not a good person. So he's not going to get the economy off and running because he's an idiot. I mean, he's dumb as a rock, man. Come on. Of course, he's got Alzheimer's, knee deep in Alzheimer's, so you can't really blame him. But uh, certainly his staff is a Kabbalah. I don't know if it gets any stupider than that or more stupid than that. Would you stop being so political? No, I won't. I won't be. There's a threat to our freedom, and it's a Democratic Party. Anyway, something to look into. I should do some more on this. Because, uh... Freaking frogs are loud. Is that a retaining pond right there? 
check out. We'll see you.